Okay. The history of blockchain. So the thing here is there was a motive to create an ecosystem which was supported by a peer-to-peer distributed computing network wherein you are able to exchange and store value without the dependency on any kind of a central entity to uphold and maintain the integrity of the network. Now, what does this objective mean? So the thing here is uh, you have Indian rupees, right? Indian rupees is backed by RBI, the government, right? And all the banks or any kind of financial institutions have to abide by all the rules, regulations, frameworks, standards, which are specified by RBI, any kind of financial institution, which is there, which is dealing with money, right? They have to follow these rules, which are there. The technology is only providing with the data handling part. That's what technology is doing. Even before information technology came into existence, even before computers came into existence, don't you think banks were already there, right? Everything was maintained on ledgers, paper ledgers, right? Physical ledgers. Later on, with the introduction of technology, with the introduction of computers into the banking space, everything became digital. So what you see, whatever existed in the physical form, right now what you see, it's just the digital representation of that. And all the security, how the security is provided, the security is provided by those standards, by those frameworks, by those governance policies, which are defined by the RBI, that every bank has to follow, any kind of financial institution has to follow. That's the security part. You have Indian government banking that uh, backing that particular currency. But the thing here is someone uh, or a group, why I'm stating that you'll come to know in the following slides, had an intent that wanted to create an ecosystem, wanted to create an environment where people are directly connected with each other. People are able to do transaction directly with each other across boundaries. Okay. There is no central entity like RBI. There is no government like India, Indian government. There's no company. There's nothing. There's no bank. So the thing here is without all these, without all these uh, uh, entities to take care of this particular network of participants directly doing transaction of some kind of value. Now the point here is it sounds too good to be true. It has to be implemented, right? So the thing why I'm stating this, let's just go ahead and see what happened. So where did this blockchain technology start? Okay, so remember I spoke about the objective that there has to be a peer-to-peer -peer network where people are able to directly transact, uh, basically exchange and store value without depending on any kind of central entity. Okay, so it started with the application called Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is the first application of blockchain technology. So you can state it like this, that Bitcoin came into existence because of blockchain technology. A blockchain technology came into existence because of Bitcoin, but the motive was first to create Bitcoin. Okay, so Bitcoin is just one application of blockchain technology. So what happened was in 2008, a guy or a group, no one knows, Satoshi Nakamoto came up with this amazing concept wherein there had to be a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, which allowed participants to directly transact with each other without going through any kind of a bank, without going through any kind of a central entity. So basically this currency came into existence. That means it became real in 2009 with the first transaction that was made. Now remember the objective, okay? The objective was there should not be any kind of central entity. So what happened was because of a technology called blockchain, you didn't need any kind of central entity authority. What they did was they took all the rules, regulations, frameworks, policies, how the network has to work and embedded that into the technical layer itself. So the thing here is you were able to transact currency directly with each other. So everyone agrees that Bitcoin has value, right? I asked someone and then someone had stated it has value. I think it was Gash, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, you said it has value. So now you understood when did this technology was born, blockchain technology? Bitcoin doesn't have any company, bank uh, or a government banking it, backing it, sorry, and still has good amount of value. That means what? It is successful. If it's successful, basically the technology behind that is effective. Do you guys agree to this? You guys can answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
okay you guys agree to this right so whenever there is a successful technology it always has a potential of evolution it always evolves it always becomes better okay so what happened was from bitcoin in uh, there, there was this guy you see on the right hand side vitalik buterin his name is vitalik buterin okay so the thing here is bitcoin had a lot of potential okay because you were able to create an ecosystem where people are able to directly do transaction between each other it has good amount of value right now and it is all because of the technology which is backing it which is blockchain so his vision was why not go beyond cryptocurrency why not like you know you can develop real life applications on such a platform on such a network on such a technology which will function better if it is decentralized if you don't have any entities in between if you don't have any kind of centralization in between everything is decentralized people are directly able to interact with each other okay so the thing is his vision was to create something called as dapps what we see right now are normal apps right applications what are dapps are dapps is nothing but decentralized applications application based on blockchain technology okay since decentralized currency decentralized applications oh. nothing else nothing complicated here okay so the point was bitcoin only allowed you to do monetary transactions that you were able to transact bitcoins with directly with each other nothing else so his vision was to create applications do you guys agree that if you want to create applications you should be able to write your own programs basically you should be able to write your own complexities and operations do you agree to this okay. yes yeah so that's what happened with ethereum that this guy instead of just restricting them with monetary transactions stated that you come on ethereum platform you are given the freedom to write your own operations own complexities which are needed to create an applications which uh, to be precise dapps which are needed to create a decentralized application so this particular platform ethereum became scripting enabled it went beyond cryptocurrencies okay it is it has a cryptocurrency it's called as ether it is its native currency okay जैसे इंडिया का करेंसी आई एन आर है राइट रुपीज इंडियन रुपीज राइट इथीरियम इको सिस्टम का जो करेंसी है दैट इज इथर बिकॉज इट्स अ बिग इको सिस्टम विच इज देर विच इन एप्लीकेशन आर रनिंग ओके सो दिस ब्रॉट इन द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ समथिंग कॉल्ड एज अ स्मार्ट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट आर नथिंग बट प्रोग्राम कोड्स बिजनेस लॉजिक written by developers basically they were given to write any kind of complexity they wanted to write any kind of operations they wanted to write it was not limited to only monetary transactions meaning you are able to create any kind of applications you wanted to create on ethereum which would run in a more effective and an efficient manner if it is decentralized okay so it's a programmable blockchain and that particular program is called as smart contracts and the application is called as dapps okay so that happened with ethereum so you see how it evolved back in 2009 it was just a cryptocurrency then it evolved in 2013 this guy had a vision of going beyond cryptocurrency to applications real life applications any kind of applications which are there okay, okay and that happened with ethereum and there are a lot of other platforms which came along after that hyperledger is something i'll i'll talk about that in the evolution part okay Okay, so now you understood, guys, like Bitcoin, how it came into existence because of blockchain technology, as well as you can say that blockchain technology came into existence because of Bitcoin. Okay, after that, what happened was Ethereum. That you have a programmable blockchain. That it was not limited to only cryptocurrency. You are able to make develop applications based on blockchain technology, and that happened, got enabled because of the Ethereum platform. Okay.